Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Hey. hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? Hey, good to, what, s- good you to see you, Ross. You too. What's, uh, what are we doing here? We are having a podcast show with uh, Dan Holloway, D'Anthony, D'Anthony, whatever D'Anthony, you call him. D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. And, and most importantly, as a selfish fuck, my book is on pre-sale. It is here. <laughs> the day is here. The day is here. Finally. Finally. Holy Finally. shit. Finally. Can, can, here. can I be honest? The, the day that it came out and you hit me up with the cover and all that stuff, I, f- I felt like weeping. I don't know if you know this, but it was three years to the day of when we started the treatment to even sell it, to take it out, to, to see if, if people would be interested in buying a book like this. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. I feel like we hyped it up so much because we thought it was going to be done, and now it's like here, and a lot has changed, but for the absolute better, and it's uh, I'm fucking excited, man. I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. So Same, and like... It, it all came out amazing, I think, for different reasons, which we'll get into in, yeah. in a minute. Because so, some of the things we got lucky on, some of the things we didn't get lucky on. Uh, one of the things we thought that we got unlucky on uh, was the DOD. Yeah. We thought, and selfishly I thought, because when we all started this whole process a long time ago with Range 15 and everything else, Matt Best was famous as shit, right? Yeah, it wasn't washed up like he is today. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> not but in particular in the military community. So I thought, and this is what I told my agent, this is what, who is now your agent, and, mm-hmm. and what I told uh, every publisher and all this, I was like, he owns the military community. They love him. Everybody's a huge fan. Well, no one owns the military community. But yeah, I was... A hundred percent. But... but Decently known, yeah. Yeah, decently known. And, I, and numbers-wise, Facebook and everything else, you're the... At the time, you were the most famous. You had the most numbers there were, right? Mm. So when it came to, to making this and going out into the world, I did not think the stumbling block would be the fucking de- de- Department of Defense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't dealt with them from a publishing <laughs> standpoint, but I've worked for those assholes before. And it's, right. uh, it's the phrase hurry up and wait exists for a reason, dude. Like it's. There's yeah. 30 fucking tiers of approval you have to get for every stupid little decision. No one's got any balls in that in those organizations. Like no one's willing to go outside because you don't you don't get rewarded for creative thinking there unless you're in certain units that promote that kind of stuff. Agreed. And and I wanted to say to start this podcast off, I'm fucking excited, guys. We're going to talk about the book, the process. We're going to talk about drinking bros, the future. We're just going to have a little sit down sesh. Ross is here in San Antonio, Texas. Yep. Um, we got Evan is in a meeting right now, and then we got Jared out doing a race car race with <laughs> against Marcus Luttrell. So like, it's cool. We'll have a laid back session here, talk about life, talk about some things in the future that are gonna be, I think, better, more epic than they've ever been before. Um, it's gonna be a cool, cool show for me. I'm, I'm really excited to chat and kind of fill in our, our brothers and our family at Drinking Bros about what's going on, and, and especially the book and this fucking crazy process. Because it's if any everybody's ever aspiring to write a book one day or just interested, like it is. It's a motherfucker, and we kind of been waiting until it's on pre-s- <laughs> yeah. pre-sale to like yeah. really get in the weeds of it, and then the trials and the, and the, the failures and successes, and honestly, kind of a blessing disguised. It took this long to come out, but you know, because we joked when we first said, "Oh, this fucking thing will be in 2009." It, it's late 2019 now. August 20th is the publishing date. I, I told you, and you sent me back like emojis of like cry f- face, ha, yeah. F- yeah, fuck you, yeah. and I was like, "No, that's kind of where we're headed right now." Well, how long did it take you from from uh, treatment to publishing for your your books? So it, the, the, it the, wasn't three years. There's no fucking. It way. was not. No. So so the first one was fast. Um, it was probably a year and a half. Yeah, typically it's about 18 months, right? Yeah, it, it's about 18 months. Yeah. And and that's if you haven't written anything at all, right? Because right. um, I didn't sell that based off a of treatment. I sold it based off the book itself. Oh, really? Yes. So you had the whole thing fucking done already. Correct. And then and then I went out with it, and it was just like, all right, all right. And that's a, that's a choice. Yeah. That's always a choice. But the, the, the difficulty with it is if people do not respond to that book, they can just toss it. Yeah. With Matt, he was on a different level because as much as you know, he's selfless and doesn't like to talk about himself— the fame and all that other stuff, it made more sense to write a treatment saying, this is going to be the greatest book ever. Yeah. Fuck you, mom and dad. And then get a, a you know a decent size advance and then move forward with the book after that. And kind of everybody agreed to that at the beginning. Um, and I think that looking back on it in the end, that was the right choice. Because had we had waited through all the DOD and all this other process, like I don't know if you could take a book this aggressive out in today's market versus... 
2016. Well, and the treatment was very aggressive. It was very like in your fucking face. Probably the most um, irreverent parts of the book were the treatment in its whole. And I don't think you really got a good scope of the ups and downs in my life and kind of the normal dude I am sometimes. Is It was just the internet persona of... I'm that best, you know, that guy, right? Not just like, that is a part of me, obviously, and I fucking love it, but this one's, the book is so much more of an experience, like up and down. I would would put that on my Instagram. Like, I I truly believe people are going to like be inspired. You'll fucking cry when you read this book. Like, I had to put it down reading a chapter the other day because like, I don't want to read this shit anymore. And we'll get all into that stuff, but. Absolutely, absolutely. But hey, you know the rules on this show. What's that? We get some sponsors who put this whole shit wagon to be on the air. Oh, I never read sponsors. Do you and read we're, sponsors? We're doing it. Like we're going, we're going old school. Coffee? We're like, going old school. Yeah. So, oh, I just I didn't first know. First and foremost, I do. <laughs> first and foremost, Black Rifle Coffee. Since we're here, yeah, we're doing yeah. it live, yeah. and we have you. Tell us what's going on at BlackRifleCoffee.com right now. Hey, man. You know, direct consumer, the best premium roast to order coffee you can get on the game, man. And uh, Number one e-commerce company in the world, right? Yeah, and it's For not— For coffee. Yeah, yep. and I think that the reason that it's that is because we're so mission-driven. We care so much about our customer base. And there's really exciting things coming out with some bag redesign and things that we're just really optimizing to make the customer experience so much better. It's pretty much what I involve all my time is like, how does the end user just love this product? And like the, the club right now is fucking epic. Like uh, two days ago, I drove out to this Marine. Um, yeah, I believe it's Marine Corps. Um, he, he won a safe in a giveaway we did. So we're doing all these. Yeah, he's a former games. Marine. Yeah. yeah $5,000 yeah. Liberty safe. Yeah, it was yeah. a great yeah. fucking safe. And yeah. so we're doing giveaways every single month in the club. You get exclusive content. Really what we're trying to promote is just the coffee club. Like be a family, be, be a partner with us and mm-hmm. we'll make sure we're amazing partners and give you like some of the coolest perks out in the game. I mean, um, and, and you know, the discounts you get in retailers, it is, is, uh, you know, there's, Evan, there's Evan, over 40 of those now, by the way, it's fucking yeah. crazy. And it's, Evan always says it like he built the club to be what he wants. And mm-hmm. I've only involved myself in that more now. Like, what are the things that I want? I love great coffee. I love the mission focus of black rifle and the give back great things. But then selfishly, I want perks myself. And that's really what we've done with black rifle. Like, how do you make this an experience that you don't walk away from? You have the, greatest coffee a great company great individuals um that are mission focused and then you also get to save a fuck ton of money and let your passions pay for your coffee so that's where we're at and i love the company and shout out to everybody at the team brcc we have an amazing team we've hired a bunch more people a lot of yep. them are veterans and they're killing the game or the customer service guys are killing the game like they're epic individuals and it's humbling every day to walk in this office and just see the amazing people that uh, work with us yes and if you're at home and want to sign up for the coffee club of the month program i've been a member for two years it's amazing gets delivered to your house the same date of every single month they do not miss go to blackriflecoffee.com type in the promo code drinking bros 20 for 20 percent off and that's a one-time use it is that's a one-time use it is because we, we you know you save so much in the club with the I shit know. you buy it's I like know. It's, it's epic i'm so. not gonna throw in sports or revolution or anything else just <laughs> drinking bros 20 if you want that 20 percent off <laughs> next up we got bisonunion.com which yeah. look I, a lot of people uh ask us all the time on our instagram especially you me dan we're always wearing i feel like we're always wearing bison union shit all the time yeah. and it's oh, like, i had one on yesterday yeah yeah, yeah. but look it, it's a lot of the same designs you guys have a coffee company together can yeah. you tell us about that because you guys well, have a coffee together and yeah. he's opening i believe a black rifle coffee shop in wyoming right that's right next month uh, 15th and 16th yep. in uh, yeah, sheridan open. sheridan wyoming there's going to be a new bison union coffee co- coffee company shop opening up we sent the roaster up there it's all yeah. like yeah. black rifle recipes it's going to be great yeah, it's super legit. You know, Bert Kuntz and, and Candace and them, they, they had their shop, the Bison Union storefront up there, and they were like, hey, you know, we partnered on Bison Union Coffee Co., um, help roast amazing coffee for them. And uh, they were like, hey, what if we put a roaster in here? We're like, absolutely, that's fucking great, man, especially in such a cool, small town that just represents just fucking America. I know. It's super it's America. so cool. Every time and, I and see the roaster, Instagram, the roaster yeah. is in there, and if you see the build-out with, like, Edwin and the guys and Evan that are really focusing on it, it's so fucking cool, man. Like, I just want to go out there for the grand opening, not to necessarily, like, be a part of it, but just to see it, just yeah. to experience, like, yeah. firsthand, like, amazing coffee roasted by these small-town guys that just want to make epic shit and create a family it's fucking rad man great t-shirts amped up yeah great t-shirts uh they got long sleeves short sleeves uh the hats belt yep. buckles the hoodies boots. look at man, everything the best. Are great yeah. L- love them across the board oh, they have uh, boots sorry bert didn't give me my boots oh he owes me you too boots <laughs> yeah me that's too. that's the thing i actually texted bert about your boots like a week ago i'm like hey dude 
Yeah. I, and not only that, but I, I said, look, I'll pay for them because I've I've put in. They're fucking rad. Credit, yeah. uh, dude, I've put They're in my awesome. credit card info 90 times and I go, Bert, we're best friends. I, I pay for Black Rifle Coffee. I pay for, pay for all the sponsors across the board because that's how a, 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 like companies run. I, if you're that asshole out there who's just like, eh, give me some free shit. Your company can't work like that. Yeah. So I go, Bert, I know your boots are rad. I'll pay for them. Yeah. And it's it's like, oh, yeah, no, I'll just send you a pair. And I'm like, no, 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 I, I'll, I'll that's, pay for that's these. Bert, Bert, there's two qualities that Bert has. One is that he'll get up and walk the fuck out of this podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, and the true. other one is that he always tries to send me, like if I say, hey, what's new on the site? I want to buy some shit. He's like, hey, I'll just send you. I'm like, no. No, just tell me. Just and tell I'll me what it is, and I'll buy it. it I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, go to bisonunion.com, Promo code Drink and Bros for twenty percent off. That's good every single time. And uh, some of the best people on the planet. By the way, if you're not following their Instagram, it's one of those Instagrams that you feel jealous of. Where you're like, yeah. God damn it, I wish I lived there and had that life. He's got like eighty five fucking buffalo now or some I know. shit. It's awesome. It's, it's so cool. No, him and, and Tyler people. Gray. Yeah, and seriously. Like, Every time Tyler, if Tyler's not shooting SEAL Team, he's there in fucking Wyoming. Why wouldn't you be? I I have no answer for that. And if you're there, you might as well get to the last sponsor of GhostBed.com <laughs> forward slash Drinking Bros. <laughs> It's been a while. Sleep so good, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Loveghostbed.com. They have a permanent 15% off discount for anybody military or first responder. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. It's a big, big savings. 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. God damn it. How do I love sleeping on a fucking ghost bed? Uh, amazing. I'm, I'm staying at your house last night. You had a sleeping ghost bed. On a there. Ghost bed yeah. And I wondered. I was like, dude, how good of friends are we? Do you have a fucking ghost bed? I, I pulled up the sheet yeah, and he yeah. did. You did. I wouldn't let a friend sleep on anything but a ghost bed. That's... I was surprised, though. It, but for a guest room, I thought you might have skimmed it down a little no, bit. No. Yeah. I, that was a nice thing. Yeah. That was a nice thing. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash oh, drinking shit. bros today. Franklin, do you have a ghost bed? You do not. You want one? Sure. Well, well, well get, hold on. I tried to give him. A I tried to give Frank a bed like two weeks ago, and he said no. It wasn't really? a ghost bed though, because I don't give those away. Come on in. Come on. <laughs> you, you can walk on in the camera. Oh wow. We're, we're having a great show today. Hi, Frank. Uh, come, How are you, come buddy? on in. Yeah, We've we're drinking. Some, this is an old wow, school show some today. Who's here? What's this? Whoa! Where did you get the lead slingers at? Are they selling it here in the stores in Texas? Yeah, they have it in uh, Specs. That's that's yeah. big here. And no he, shit. And, and he knows the guy. He knows the guy in Carolina Beach. He knows the guy. Yeah, dude, they it's have it's everywhere all, now. All, it's, it, it's, everywhere. it's I think it's in thirty-two states. Is that right? Uh, no, it's going to be in all fifty. Uh, and there's some really cool just distribution channels that are working through right now. Oh so. shit, man! I'm thank you, Franklin Chambliss. Thank you. What's your, hey? What's your Instagram, Franklin? Frank Machine 63 Delta. It's 63D, right? 63D, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For all, all, all the civilians out there who don't know what the fuck Delta means. Um, <laughs> yeah, go to D. Uh, Franklin, we're going to get him a ghost bed. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get that. I'll Slide go, me some of that lead slingers. I'll go, when that's, we're good that's, to go. I'll, I'll go old school since I hate you, Ross. I need to get drunk to tolerate you. I know. So uh, at the Apparently, top of the show, before we get into the book, we'll, we all we'll talk hate about each other, this. right? We do. You hate us and we hate everybody. Yeah, and that's that's a, that's a misnomer. <laughs> Is that a is that a word? A mis non comnomers? Uh, misnomer is a word, yeah. I told Ross, you know, he may like dislike me, but if I just call him Ross Fatterson, he'll really hate me for the whole entire show. Uh, look, we won I, I won the, the, the shirtless did. San Antonio showdown, so I'm fine. I'm fine with it. But you on. and I trained together Con and you were like, dude, are you on steroids? Conversely, I took the photo and helped make you look good. Not you that you needed a lot of help. You, you got some muscles on you. To totally truthful, yeah. Was, absolutely. As being a teammate. No, you know? and we had fun. And like you have a you have a personal home gym in your house. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Thank Your son is amazing. Uh, we spent some time in there. Like you're living the dream here, by the way. I'm like a poor man's Joe Rogan, you know. Like I have like a you know twelve hundred dollar sauna and some free fucking shit. From it's nice, man. You, you got a nice Rogue. outfit. Shout out to you guys, thanks. Your dad's right down the road. We were able yeah. to hang out with him. I'm a it's amazing, guy, man. Yeah, but a lot of people have asked, and like uh, I think we did something or Jared posted something by the way wrong guy to write a message or any form of post <laughs> in anything well like. the problem is my dad living he Jesus. comes and feeds me Jamin sh shots and I don't know if you can see this but this is so much down my foot is fucking demolished. is it broken I thought it was broken when you Bone did bros, it right? no I'm getting better in my old age because my wife I was like I'm like it's broken the second it landed and like thankfully you know Jared and guys ran over to pull the fucking razor off me and I was like stop let me like get my foot out I'm like it's broken like I just yeah. I, I just felt the amount of like pain where it's not it's not painful but it's that numbness you mm -hmm. know where you're like ah uh, oh, it's shattered yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's where yeah. you know the nerves are like yeah. shut yeah. it shut Gone. it down shut yeah. it down and thanks for you know milk does a body good um 
titty milk or something. I don't know. <laughs> Cambodian you keep, breast milk. You keep milk, surviving. Yeah. You keep cheating death, by the way. You're yeah, a walking final I need destination. To. I need to. That's why this book is, I'm happy it came out because I keep, <laughs> I keep cheating death and it's going to catch up to me. But yeah, it's not broken. Just massive bone bruising and ligament bruising, which is actually more painful than a break for me on this one because I've broken that foot twice now. Um, that left foot just loves to get injured. I don't know. So my, my question is this, you know, and we've said this privately yeah. off air, and I'm, I'm now I'm going to say it on air. Go for it. Uh, since we're here and we're dropping this live, we're having some drinks. We're going to old school today. Sure. You're the face of this company, in my opinion. Too pretty to do all the stupid shit you're doing. No more MMA. MMA. No. No more Never. flipping gators. Never. Just no, but live a beautiful life, man. No, but man. fuck that. That's my problem with all these fucking Hollywood fucking pussy fucks that put on their goddamn flannel. <laughs> they, they grow their fucking beard out, and they say I'm a fucking man. Like, I'm not going to say something I'm not and not going to do something I don't live. Like, I'm not going to sit and say, man, I could beat that guy up. I, only if that dude looked at me. Like, I want the skill sets where if I get into a fucking street fight with three people, mm. I'm like, I may win this. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I want that fucking confidence for me and my family. Like, my wife is hot as shit. Like, she gets hit on anywhere she goes like i want to know if someone is trying to accost her like i'll take on fucking three dudes i might lose but i'll be good enough to at least postpone her and she can get the fuck out so like i'll never not do that kind of stuff and honestly especially with the book you you fucking know my life story i've done so yeah. much crazy shit in my day that like i still need it like it's i'm chewing nicotine gum because i miss fucking you know tobacco it's the, yeah. not in, that's a fucking metaphor absolutely and so yeah I, I, no i'm not gonna not do that i mean i get drunk and fist fight all the time and you know jeremy you know, and you know, i always punching each other yeah <laughs> and, shit. and the funny thing is is like everybody asks me all the time like what is he like in real life what's what's matt like in real life and i'm like he actually is that dude i would say you uh dakota dakota meyer and tim kennedy if you're out at a bar and shit goes down, right? Because that's a normal day life situation where you're out and, you know, hey, somebody could get fucked up or somebody could start, you know, wielding a knife or something. It was like, those are probably the three dudes that you see online in real life are that those guys where you're like, all right, cool. I'd still put Tim at one. Yeah, you but, know, so I, I laughed and but, I'll say that to you. Someone, someone saw me sparring or whatever. They're like, dude, it'd be so cool to see you and Tim fight. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Pause. People don't understand the difference Pause. between really good at something and great at something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tim, big, is, Tim is in another like better planet. than most, yeah. and then exceptional. Yeah. yeah, UFC level guys like Tim would just take me down and land me and tickle me. Like yeah. no shit. Yeah. And, and if you think that I'm saying a bitch, go do that because I've had dudes. Jeremy was one of them. Black belt fucking got in a jiu-jitsu match and he weighs 250 fucking pounds laying on me and started tickling me and I couldn't get up and I was like I never ever want to experience Jeremy this Horn? ever again Jeremy Horn uh, no about? well Jeremy Horn Jeremy would do that, but Jeremy May, May. Yeah, okay, like, yeah, yeah. but and Tim is like next level like uh, no like, yeah I'll just I'd have to shoot him you know yeah. but then he can shoot too but <laughs> I still got Tim beat on the on the marksmanship and you can hold me to that I love you Tim but we'll we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a gun off someday then, I'd love to Tim, your book. Tim, Tim's more of a long gun guy anyway though well he's a sniper yeah. Yeah, he'll fuck me up in Longdale all day. But Sheepdog Response, Tim's an awesome guy. You can yeah. check out their program, and they do great self-defense work. Like, and he's got really good hair, too. Yeah. yeah. And quads. His, I, there's few, Josh Tyler and Tim Kennedy. Yeah, I, have, quads, I have leg yeah. crushes on. They got yeah. great legs. Yeah. We were yeah. like, that dude's got, that boy's got wheels. He deadlifts. Because <laughs> people, Respect. Ask, people Respect. ask all the time, and I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah. I'm a fraternity all-star. We're like, I'm, I'm good enough for about 98% of the population. Then there's the 2% like you guys that are above and beyond where it's just like, oh, man, I can't, I can't win. Dude, fighting sucks. It's just like rolling a razor. Like you think you've done, I've done it how many times and been completely fine, but there's the times where you do everything you're supposed to and you fucking fuck your shit up. Yeah. Just like fighting. There could be a nobody out there and knock me the fuck out. You know, just right timing. You right never placement. know. You never know. Who is, uh, God, who's in the building here who fights MMA? Justin. Yes. Justin. Yeah. Yeah. Disgusting you, Justin. Disgusting Justin, yeah. who you heard on an episode like, what, like three or four months ago talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he, didn't, I didn't know that. Which I'm he's, still going to have an a... HR discussion with him after that one. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't even listen to it. It was pretty rough, time. yeah. But he's, he's won a couple he's a of fights dude. in Bellator, so he's. he's yeah, and he's fighting dude. soon, I believe, right? He's fighting in Houston, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, in two weeks, uh, I think. No, his opponent uh, pulled out, I think. Oh, shit, really? That oh, sucks. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, man. Why don't you just fucking beat the shit out of him one day? Yeah, exactly. Is that an HR issue if you just show up and beat the shit out of one of your employees? Eh, probably not. I don't know. I don't want to do jiu-jitsu with him. He's a black belt. He's man. really but I, good but at I got like I got like 60 pounds on him. So you do, yeah. And height and reach, too. I don't know. Luckily, you were three guys who don't pull out. Um, yeah. Speaking of not pulling out, you did not pull out on this book. No. Uh, you, you went full bone all the way in the entire time. Uh, one of the biggest questions we get from you know everybody who listens to the show sure. is, hey, man, I would love to write a book. 
How hard is it? What's it like? Yeah, yeah. What's the process like? I, I've been through it. I'm curious to hear your side of it going into it. How was for it sure. for you and how was the expectations going in? Because we started this process May 1st yeah. of, of 2016 at yeah. this point. Yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy process. And if you, if you try to look up the book, it's Thank You for My Service. I changed the title, and then, then we'll get into that um, later. But Actually, we, we can do it now. Uh, well, I, 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 it was called Freedom the Fuck On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, in that three-year right. process, right. five other books had come out on the bestseller yeah, list. Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Um, how to Unfuck, how to your, unfuck your, life. your Life. Yeah. Like the, there, there's a bunch of them, and I felt that it was like diluted where the shock and awe value was, was, was just kind of over it, and it wasn't where I'm at in life now. And I also thought, you know, I go on a lot of conservative radio shows and, and you know, some some of the conservative audiences, which I, I'm a part of and I love necessarily like don't want to use cuss words. I totally right. understand that. So I was like, man, I don't want to live limit my reach because I believe the story is so hilarious and impactful. And I'm probably I, I think I've been, I was courageous in the sense of like I just put myself out there like a lot of my faults. So like. I don't think a lot of people were willing to do that. Like where I was just like, fuck it, man, this yeah, is my life. Sure. And even my wife read it. She was like, geez, man, like you, you kind of put everything out there and I'm proud of you. And I was like, wow, fuck. Thanks, babe. That was super nice of you. What's well, so, a big part of the veteran community in general. Like, so there's been a couple of pieces of media over the years that have really been impactful in a way to teach the American public what we're really like. Yeah. And generation kill was one of them. Okay. And yeah. there's been a number of other ones, obviously, but it's, one of the things that, that veterans face when they get out is like no one understands. Like they think I'm a fucking piece of shit and an asshole because I'm. I think dark shit's funny, right? And I, I do this crazy stuff because life has gotten super boring because gunfights are exciting, right? And yeah. doing paperwork is not. Well, that's and that's like you know, not to add to that, Dan. I think it's super interesting because people go, "You're you're you're a psychopath and you're a murderer if, if you miss war," and I and I completely disagree with that statement. Mm. I think that the brotherhood and the excitement and the endorphins you get in there are never replicated in the manner of such that you find ways to compensate for, but they'll never fulfill that. So you often try to find ways to like, man, I wish I was back there, but they're kind of the worst times. You're like, you, you asked me, go get in a gunfight with ISIS. Okay, I'm crazy. I'd probably say yes, but like, you don't want to fucking die. You don't want your friends to die, but yet you miss it. The psychology yeah. in that is very complex and, and interesting. And, and that's what I try to like put in this book a little bit. Like fucking war was like a heroin to me i fucking loved it and i've never done heroin but like it was a fucking drug and then you don't realize what you're doing and then you get off of it you're like life is so unsatisfying right like, like what am i sitting behind a fucking computer nine to five i don't want to do that and i think that's a problem a lot of us have with transitioning because you don't you don't want to be normal like you were exceptional go be exceptional and i i hope that my journey and my really shortcomings <laughs> and and where i've failed in life but i've i've you know stepped back up and fixed it or like to hopefully inspire other people to like, you can go do this. And, and especially the guys that are in active duty, I don't want them to fucking go through the shit that I went through and like the depressive times getting out of the military. I don't want them to experience that. I want them to experience like fulfillment, but understand like, okay, I can actually go do something else and succeed at it, which will be hopefully more fulfilling in a different way. But you don't, you're, you're just not hating life because it's right. fucking yeah. boring sometimes, you know? Yeah, people, I mean, the, the, our culture, our society in general needs exceptional people that are willing to yeah. go. Like, we, we don't see barriers as a barrier. We see it as a fucking something to blast through. That's right. just how we're programmed right. mentally. So I, those young kids need to hear this shit. They're like, hey, you get back from war, you, you feel like there's no purpose anymore. There's so much more to do here. Well, in the third and fourth order effects of that, too. Like, I, you know, I, I'm a very, like, intro perspective guy where I try to see what I've done in my life and why I've ruined relationships. Like, when I first got in the military, like, I dated this freaking amazing girl. She was beautiful and awesome. And I just sabotaged everything. I was cheating. I just m wanted her to break up with me, you know? Why? It's because I fucking, I thrived in chaos and I love chaos. And when shit was normal, I fucking hated it. I was like, how do I just wreck this whole entire room so I can fix it? I want to create the problem so I can fix it because no one else is creating the problem. Where now I'm like, okay, I can ho like hone that energy and put it into being creative in music and business mm -hmm. and, and all these other things where it takes the power out of me so I can be a normal dude again. And, and yeah, I don't know. I'm fucking rambling, but no, you're, you're not at all. Now the point going back to that, it's the, the point of this book is going to be, it's not just about Matt best or black rifle or even your no. personal experiences It's about being another piece that people can identify with both from our side that understand the stories and how you've made your journey and become a very successful businessman despite all these other challenges. And then from the civilian side to read this and understand that we're not fucking lunatics. We're right. people who are very exceptional at something. And right. 
we had we were forced by circumstance to move on and it was a difficult fucking process so just like our job was to go fight the enemy and 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 protect this country and we did we did our job your job is to make this country worth fighting for so look at our fucking struggle and experience and fucking realize how important it was and then make the country fucking worth it so to, to piggyback back off of that for you guys and, and for you matt in particular yeah was it easier because you were creating a job for yourself or a business for yourself that you love to do versus taking other jobs for other people and all that stuff? And you go into it in, in the book, some of the various other jobs you had for shorter periods of time. But yeah. I would have to imagine coming into a place like Black Rifle Coffee, where you love what you do every day, you're passionate about the coffee, yeah. you're passionate. You, you, look, you work with your best friends every single day. Right. That had to have helped, right? Oh, 100 percent. And I, you know, I, I speak in depth of that in the book. And I think I always go back to transition. I've done, you know, interviews over the years about it where like I'm purpose driven, where I have to feel fulfilled to like be motivated. And if I'm checking a box every day, I fucking hate it, man. I'm an ideator. Like I'm the guy that's creative and wants to like problem solve and, and just fix shit and have these ideas. But if I don't have anything to solve or fix, I am so miserable. And, and I'm like, you know, again, it's just like it's the creative mind. And, and I think understanding yourself is always the best step forward to how you find your own success. Because like the my journey might not be for everybody, but it might be insightful to be like, oh, OK, I'm not necessarily like Matt, but I, there's some attributes there that are very similar to me. Maybe that's why I do that. You know, like I'm the guy where like my, my, my brain tells me like, no, 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 get a little too drunk and go a little too fast. Like before I crashed that razor fucking and this is only like two weeks ago. I told my wife, I was like, I'm going to go roll this in front of like 15 people. She's like, sweetheart, please don't. And I was like, yeah. And I got in it. 30 seconds later, I was fucking laying on the ground and having to get picked up the razor off me. Is so that it's true? Like 100%. I, I, I said it right before. And it's chaos, right? I created my own chaos. Yeah. And, then, and then right when I come back to my rationale, I'm like, wow, I'm an idiot. You know, <laughs> but it's it's just it's the way my brain works. And, and because it works that way, I've I've created some absolutely epic, entertaining moments in my life. And um, I, house, I wouldn't change it. For your the world. house also lends itself to a blast at all times. Yeah. I, the, the only way I can compare it, if you haven't been to Matt's house, <laughs> it reminds me of Bam Margera's back in the day where it's it's a palatial spread. You have a ton of land. And you can just we, we were lighting things on fire. You can drive the gator. Mm -hmm. uh, you well, how many hunt, how many you times? Hunt, yeah, shoot, I was gonna you say can do whatever you want. I like, was gonna say how many times have you stopped on your way home and seen like oh there's a deer over there. I'm gonna shoot this <laughs> all the <laughs> time. Like I see an axis on my neighbor's yard. And I'm like man, I should just go to his front door and be like hey can I whip out my bow real quick yeah. man and slay that thing. <laughs> Matt just keeps a bow in the car at, at, at all times now just in case. I, I don't for the sole reason I probably <laughs> use it. So I'm like no. And I want to point out for the audience at home that he is in a gated community, so you can't come into that, right? Like, <laughs> no. bams, you can just show up, and it's like, oh, all right, cool. That's where they shot the show. Yeah, I don't think that I'm lost in life. I think some guy, people that like have this to like recreate instances of their past, I just enjoy it. I think I love land. I love seeing the dogs run. My, my Theo, my little pup, will find every deer bone in that fucking place. Not even deer that I've shot, just dead deer that have died over the years. Like, he, my wife just sent me a photo right before the show. There's like a skull and arms and like he just finds whatever's probably been dead for like 10 years in that property and brings it back he's like a little retriever because he's got the nose of a fucking mm -hmm. aussie so he just he's it's hilarious but I, I think it's fucking great it's it's a fun time so like usually uh we call it sunday send it sundays at the best house yeah, where it's your dad i'm gonna pause on those for a while but yeah you shouldn't it was it's a blast it's like fun. look it's jeremy and them are out of control on the goddamn gators jeremy's a psychopath yeah <laughs> for sure but, but it's your dad uh, your wife, um, pretty much all your best friends. We, we go over there, we barbecue, we hang out, uh, drink some beers, have some some tomahawks. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's a dream on a Sunday. Yeah, uh, you're one of those people, unlike Jared, who likes kids. So like if kids are over and everything else, like yeah, it's it's a great time for everybody, and it's like seven acres, so everybody can just great. Here's a here's a motorbike. Here's a gator. Go shoot. Do, do whatever. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And I guess to go like full back to when we're talking about the the, the change of the title of the book, you know, I, I looked at this as like, thank you for my service was a way of like me kind of just like trolling myself in the community because I, I wanted everybody that's like, you know, they say thank you for your service to veterans, but they don't mean it. They just say it because they feel yeah. obligated and like, I'm a good person. Yeah, I want to fucking it, troll those people where 
they don't give a fuck no. about veterans. It's like everybody wants to support veterans until it's fucking time to support yeah. veterans. And I want them to pick up this book and I want them to fucking read it and go like, I can't believe he said the F word and talked about a threesome. You're like, you're fucking right I did because those are the instances in my life that built the man that I am today and I couldn't be the husband that I am if I didn't have those experiences in my past. Like, wake the fuck up lady that's fucking watching or you know listening to Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. And, and, and hopefully in a perfect world they read it and they go, wow, this is insightful and like, you know, maybe have a better understanding of the sacrifice of these amazing men and women that serve our country and are so selfless and just are willing to like, you know, sacrifice life, limb and eyesight for the benefit of what we believe in. And that's fucking freedom just to do what we want. Like, you know, and not only that, but like most guys, 90 percent of guys have done that. They've lived that life. So what's the shame in saying, oh, no, I was never like that. or I never did this because like, people are scared to be themselves. They're so scared to freaking be open because they might get judged. I'm like, bring the judgment, man, yeah, because. Seriously. I own it. My actions are my actions, and they've not always been perfect. Sometimes they've been fucking very faulted, but it's who I am, you know? God bless the broken road that led me straight to you. <laughs> fucking Rascal Flat song right there. Well, let's talk about the broken road. Uh, we started this May 1st. Yep. Uh, Great 2000, segue, by the way. That was 2016, awesome. you're Wilkes. And that was a month before Range 15 aired, right? Uh, you know, yes, yes. June 16th? Yeah, 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 it was. Um, st started the treatment. Just to give people thing. like an idea of how fucking long ago that was. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, like, uh, I turned in the, the, the final cut to, uh, fuck, who was it? Distriber? Distriber did that movie, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, I forget who, Tug put it on theaters. I turned that in, I remember May 4th. You and I started the book May 1st because it was, it was done at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, we started the treatments and then it went on sale in the fall. We ended up uh, in a, a bidding war, which was awesome, before we even got to New York, because yep. all the publishers are out of New York. Um, it came down to, there was eight, eight publishers that wanted to meet with us. Uh, it was the day after the election, uh, when Trump was elected, and we yeah. were scheduled. Everybody and their mother thought Hillary was going to win. And one publisher came in and said, hey, uh, we want to give you X amount of dollars, but you have two hours two hours to sign this contract yeah cancel all your meetings or we're pulling this away which i do want to publicly thank you know penguin random house the parent company um for, for taking a risk on me because i am a massive risk like i am a gun toting the antithesis of what leftism fucking stands for you know and well i don't even call it leftism anymore because liberals are not it's like progressives in this hardcore left that are like believe in socialism like you guys are fucking lunatics like google venezuela you fucking morons anyways um they took a risk on me and and i think it'll pay off and i think that this book will be something fucking special like really special so same same but the, the interesting part about this if you don't know at home during that two-hour process you had called me before and said hey man i'm about to go get some dental work done yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be high as shit coming out of here, but here's and my I'm number. Out, and I'm yeah. out, and that's, yeah. that's it. And I was like, you don't have anything to worry about. Like, the meeting's already set. Nothing's going to happen anymore. You're like, great, because they're putting me under. Yeah. Um, got a phone call during the middle of it. It was about 4.15 and said, hey, there's an offer out there. They, they want you to cancel everything else, but we've got to have a verbal yes from Matt. And right. he was out. Right. And this point is 4.15, and they were pulling the offer at 6 p.m. And so I called Jared because you were gone. Yeah. And I said, look, I don't care what you have to do. You got to wake Matt up just to say yes. Yeah. At 545, you woke up and got you on the phone on a conference call. And all you think, yeah, thank <laughs> we can't the so you know, other meeting. I, I don't know if he wants to say his name. Scott B., you know who you are. Uh, he picked me up and drove me back. And, like, I spilled <laughs> meal prep because I was trying to eat. And I fucking spilled it all in his truck. It was, like, one of those YouTube videos of when you get your, like, uh, yeah, yeah, your wisdom yeah, teeth pulled. Wisdom teeth out, yeah. If, if you, I remember because I had all those missed calls and texts. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, and we got it done, man. And, and it was super cool. And the process there for it has been, like, man, what a But, but what here's a the thing. Show. Uh, on my side, so nobody believed me. They thought I was trying to stall and or, or the agent was trying to stall to try to go after other offers i was like no man he is unconscious on a on a dentist yeah. chair right like, now oh like, we've heard this the dog ate the pet the, yeah, the yeah and i'm like no no no. i promise <laughs> i promise please please don't like i will get him on the phone so we had about 15 minutes left yeah. to spare yeah uh it went through and it was great and then you and i are excited talked about it the next day you say you don't remember any of that whatsoever not really came and, back after a while but yeah yeah, was... yeah yeah uh and then we go to new york and, and we're not expecting any of this because Hillary was supposed to have her breaking in the, gra the, right. the glass ceiling and all that other shit um, didn't go down. Trump got elected, and our meeting was the day, the day after. 
yeah. Trump got elected. Was, Here we are crazy. selling this book about pro-America guns, tattoos, a guy killing people. And it was just, I mean, it was like a fucking funeral in yeah. New York. It we was, walked they, in. Were, Remember, there was 10,000 people protesting no, the in the whole, streets. Yeah, the whole streets. And I was just standing there with my black rifle shirt on like, yeah. We got, a, we got a, a, an unbelievable me. photo that night. That yeah. was one of my favorite photos of all time. Uh, we went through the building. I'll did publish the whole that meeting. actually. On Thank you for my service book on Instagram. Uh, the, the book Instagram. I'll, we should put that photo up yes. there. I'm standing there and you see all the protesters and it's my black rifle uh, so back good. tag. Yeah. Uh, and it's, whoosh, it's cool. <laughs> so it goes through. We yeah. go through that whole process. Then it's like, all right, great. November. We want the first draft by, I think it was the end of February, right? Yeah. Which, which is cool because I'm going to bring it back a little bit. You know, I don't know. I think you know this. It happened after. But like, so I started writing a book before all of this. Right when I got out of the military, I remembered so vividly of a lot of the things that I'd done. And I was like, I don't want to lose those memories. And I don't want to like change them for the sake of stories. I want to make mm. sure that they're correct. And I like specifically, you know, Bremen Barraza, my team leader and squad leader, I really wanted to like paint a vivid picture the most accurate of exactly what happened because i don't really like books that fabricate things i really wanted to be like truthful and honest to the legacy of these amazing people and so i wrote a whole chapter on that and i forgot about it after we'd already worked on the book for so long and i revisited it and i was like most of what i remembered was completely accurate but it brought up a lot more like sensory things of Fuck, I forgot kind of how I was I feeling. I didn't know that, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'd actually um, asked a friend of mine who, who's, um, his father was an author if he'd write a book. And he's like, oh, you can't make this happen. And pretty much shunned me down about it. So, like, that's when we discussed it. I was like, well, this is the price point I'd want. And I really want to make this thing big because gotcha. I feel like this is a worthwhile story. Um, but, yeah, yeah. So, a lot of people don't know that. I already kind of thought about this the last six, seven years. And then when it came to you opening the door to kind of get in the publisher with the agent. I was like, okay, let's make this thing fucking epic. And then when we signed the deal, I was like, oh shit, I have to write a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. And I'm like, can I write it in crayons? Yeah. No. <laughs> Got it. So picture it book, pop -up right? Book? It's a pop-up picture book. And they're like, no, no, no. You have to like write it in like the typewriter. I'm like, like a typewriter or computer. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, uh, that's a great point for anybody else looking to write a book out there. You don't want to lose these memories. So no. if something happens to you in your life and you have any wish or dream or hope to write a book someday, write it down because you're going to forget a lot of this shit. Like if I, I, I've i never written a biography about my life. If I had to, I don't think I would remember half of it because I, I never did what you did. I didn't. I've never stopped to write anything down, I don't think. Yeah, I'm never one to like be a journal, but I think, you know, being a creative and you too, Ross, like you have to like some of the funnest moments in life are fleeting. And if you don't like kind of mm -hmm. memorialize them in, in a way of remembering them, then they're gone forever. And that's fine, you know, but like a lot of times there's so many stories in this. I could write three more books of the crazy shit I've done mm -hmm. in life, but I try to highlight the best ones I did and really remember those. And I think it speaks through with a lot of the war stories where I didn't want to talk about, you know, there I was, no shit there I was. I shot him in the chest twice and moved on because my training took over. I'm like, that's redundant. It's been spoken to before. How do I recreate an experience and have someone ride shotgun with me to feel that they're going through the same crazy emotion that I was going through? Like, what the fuck am I doing? I am in the middle of a desert. I'm freezing I'm my ass off. I'm 19 years old. I'm 19 years old and I'm leading is happening. <laughs> seven strikers to a fucking yeah. terrorist that just fucking built IEDs to kill a bunch of Amer Like, what the f I am not qualified for this job, yeah. but you have to fake it till you make it kind of thing. And yeah. I really try to like put that in there because I think most military guys will say that like no one knows the answer in this shit. You're just there with your team members and you're doing the best you fucking can. Mm -hmm. Just like a podcast and business, like I don't know what to say next, but you just got to be the best version of you and train it and work mm -hmm. for it. And I, I truly don't believe a, a, especially a military book has been ever written like this. And I, it's a proud moment for me. You know, I, I'm, I'm nervous really nervous about it because who knows it could be huge it could be not huge but i think the people that read this will be like fucking a matt solid work i think this kind of book has to come out of the gwat though like uh if you think about world war ii it was people in their teens and 20s fighting people in their teens and 20s right but in this war it's people in their teens and 20s fighting people the mujahideen and and and, and al-qaeda and isis who had been fighting for fucking decades and we just showed up 19 22 3, 24 right. years old it's it's so much different, and and the experiences. Of well, and and then I don't think there's combating nations, right? You had these like kind of small per se proxy yeah. wars. Yeah. I mean, it was a real war, but like you're fighting these really dynamic engagements, and then you're like, especially in range battalion, you're there for four months, you're back, you're there. For, it's just like a, this bizarre psychology that yeah. like 
I was supposed to be a normal adult drinking at the bar trying to get laid, and then I got to go play like hardcore war. It's just, it's, yeah, it's, dude. it's different, and there's technology involved, it's, and it's 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 crazy. It's wild. I mean, we were <coughs> we were uh, on patrol on a Sunday, and by Wednesday of the next week, I was back at Fort Bragg driving around, like, and <laughs> road rage in Iraq is a little bit different than road rage in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Road, <laughs> road rage in Iraq is like motherfucker, and you got your gun in their face, and then back in Fort Bragg, you're like reaching for things that aren't there anymore on your toolkit like oh, i don't have my gun i don't have my rifle right now what am i gonna do oh no i'm not gonna do anything this is right. not yeah i'm on a, like i gotta come two lane out. highway yeah. i but, should probably but, slow it down and, and yeah. i think that that's what i really hope to do in this it's the same stance i took with like my videos right mm -hmm. where people call that pts or ptsd however they define it they mm -hmm. go man you're fucked up because you went to grab for a fucking belt when a dude was walking up to your yeah. window you're like no that's just years of being a fucking professional man yeah. like you can't take muscle memory out of you. It's what you're conditioned to do, and conditioning is everything in life. And so it's like, ex not exploring that, but like showing my journey in that was like a way of hopefully people go, fuck, I'm just like that. That's hilarious. And laughing at yourself. Like, yeah, yeah. I still do that today. You hear shit, you're like, okay, well, okay, okay, damn it. Like, yeah. You know, it's it's bizarre, but it, it's, it's, you can't spend it, send a bunch of young men and women to war and then expect them to be completely functioning in the social constraints that you believe in. Like it just doesn't it doesn't work that way. No, but there's so many benefits of that type so many of attitude. Benefits. Though. Yeah. Awesome. Like bring us back and and use us. And for yeah. all the for all those people, taught you you were talking about how Matt uh, came back and he was part of his own businesses. Mm -hmm. There's California alone, 150 thousand new businesses per year. Really, one hundred and fifty thousand. Now, of course, most of those oh. fail because most businesses fail. Yeah, but one hundred fifty thousand in California alone per year. One hundred forty-eight thousand of them are just dance studios, though. <laughs> I just want to dance. <laughs> hot, hot yoga. You yeah. do. Is that that's why you're growing that hair, right? For the dance studio. I have to. I have yeah. to. Yeah, I'm. I'm one hundred and fifty thousand and one. I'm. You're I'm opening up my I'm, own Swayze dance studio. It's the summer of Swayze. Up. So summer of Swayze. Uh, I want. I want to turn it to a kind of a serious topic is uh when we were going through the interviews and then writing this book there was one chapter in particular that mm -hmm. was arguably the most difficult moment or day in your entire life right how hard was that to relive that day not only during that interview process but then 90 fucking rewrites over and over and over again and i think that's a lot of that's a, that's a lot of things that people forget about when you read a military book of like, oh, man, I'm just reading about some, some guy's life story. You don't think about the, the fact that they went through 90 edits and had to relive that day over 90 times, essentially. How was that for you? Because you mentioned Bremen Barraza. Mm -hmm. I know those guys were obviously your heroes and they're in the book and the audience won't understand until they read it. Um, but those were your mentors. Writing about that day, how hard was that reliving it over and over and over again? That's something that happened to you, you know. 10 years ago um the hard part isn't for me it's ensuring that i got the story right and i did them honorably like the way i look at that is like i i want the story to be honoring their legacy and their sacrifice and, and I, there's a couple of very impactful statements in there i think that where it's like it's not it, it's not me telling the story for like to be revered it's me telling the story for it to be like i wish i knew a motherfucker like those guys because how impactful they were in my life. So it's like, it's not challenging the sense of like reliving it, like, oh my God, poor Matt. No, it's like, I hope I did them right. And I hope their family reads that and goes, man, I'm glad that every person that picks up this book read their name, they said it out loud, and they know that there's fucking all these epic dudes like that that were just like glorious fucking epic motherfuckers that put everything on the line, sacrificed everything fucking for us. And it's, I just hope I get it right. And I feel like I did. Um, but that's the hard part, and I can't imagine a lot of other authors like that wrote about that one story, whether it's a, a military memoir or whatnot, and they that they have to talk about that every single day. They relive it for the rest of their life. Yeah. Like I feel compassion for that because it, I can imagine it's challenging. The way I do things is I compartmentalize it, and I'm like, okay, moving on. And when you revisit it, like I, it's not to say that I haven't you know read it in one of the edits and been like a couple wines deep and you're like fuck I like have to close the book and I'm like I'm done for the night like I'm good like I'm good because I just don't like you don't want to necessarily relive that it just opens up pour, pour salt in the wound that's never really closed it's kind of their scar tissue on there but you just don't really want to fucking revisit it you know yeah and you know obviously we're friends with you know Marcus Luttrell his book was huge Lone Survivor mm -hmm. and it got made into a movie mm -hmm. where you know everybody that comes up to Marcus 
outside of it wants to talk about right. what happened that day or happened in the movie. Same ha thing with Clint. Yeah, we were same with Clint like, Rocha. Yeah. 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 Have you thought about that? Clint was here today. Clint's. I love fucking. He's Clint. the great so one awesome. of the greatest guys on the planet. So, so is Marcus, awesome. man. Marcus yep. is fucking rad. Have you thought about that? If this gets bought into a movie and, and made, the only way I would ever sell it into movie rights is if I have one hundred percent script control yeah. and I can ensure that like they don't fuck shit up. Like I'm I'm driven by money in the sense that it creates a more comfortable lifestyle and I know that I can pay my mortgage. But I I'm in a position in life and it's why that I have businesses is because I want creative control and I don't want people to do injustice to like things that I hold so near and dear to my heart. So like. If that happens, awesome. I would love to tell the story and love to see fucking whoever play me, but they're not going to fuck up those Chris parts. Hemsworth? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm hey, going Hemsworth. He's handsome, man. Yeah. Or who, uh, who's the uh, who's the guy, Guardians of Galaxy? and uh, uh, Chris Pratt. Chris yeah. Pratt. No. He, Come on. He's no. funny and quirky. He's a dork like me, man. I like that guy. I go Hemsworth is more jacked and, you know. No, but like, he's like, I will fight. Tell we go in the night. <laughs> well, man, that ain't me, dude. I'm like, well, we're all gonna die. Let's uh, kill a bunch of them. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's look, he's pro military, so you got one in Hollywood. Tell yeah, me, Chris he, Pratt. Yeah, he's Chris a big, Pratt. he's a big hunter he's too, hunter. and everybody's yeah. giving him shit about it. Like, dude, this guy goes out on his own and hunts game and fucking. They're judging him while he, they fucking eat McDonald's hamburgers yeah, or they eat bacon from By a the fucking way, pig farm. Exactly. Like, not to look do, that shit up. Not, not, not to go off track here, but did you see uh, Rogan and Russell Brand talking about hunting? Like, Russell Brand is a super vegetarian, morally opposed to eating Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's, if you haven't seen it yet, go fucking watch it because it's a great... Joe Rogan explaining the process of hunting and the visceral connection he makes mm -hmm. and, and avoiding the fucking meatpacking process and all that bullshit. Like... And it's it's, it's it's really it's, enti interesting. it's entirely true too. So yeah. I, well, no, but I think that I, I wish <coughs> I wish everybody could go not to get in a hunting thing real quick, but I wish everybody could fucking cut open a deer and they pull those tenderloins out, right? And you, and you have the tenderloin about probably this big, like yeah. what about you know I don't know, 12, 16 inches, mm -hmm. depending maybe a little longer on the deer or elk, whatever animal you're shooting, and that's the fillet. Yeah. So when you eat fillets, that's all you get out of that one animal. Yeah. And it puts it really in perspective of like, whoa, this life gave me that. And it's it's fucking humbling and awesome. But a lot of motherfuckers are too pussy to even recognize that. Like, oh, just grind it up and whatever. But like, you have to understand, like, there's another life form that's feeding you. It's a circle of life, man. Like, it's fucking Simba, right? We become the grass. <laughs> it's fucking, it's that, dude. And once you have, it's hard to understand just like war. But once you get it, you're like, man, I'm content. I'm a little more happy in life because I understand the complexities and the fucking fragility of life. And it's yeah. pretty rad because my ass is dying here soon. And, yep. you know, if you fucking shot me, Dan, and fucking flayed me open, like, I hope you drink beer and, you know, would grill me. I would grill you. I would. You do... go ass first, though. Yeah. These glutes because oh, they're a little yeah. muscular. You've got but... good legs and ass. So <laughs> yeah. I would do that. Dan's where I'm sick started. like that. Yeah, because he wants to go for <laughs> yeah. ass and, yeah. and everything yeah. else. But, and he'll also want to sit with you and tell you about it, too, which is a nice Yeah, thing. while right. you're still alive. So I'm going right. to amputate both your legs. <laughs> and as I'm it's trying like, to get it, it's yeah. like uh, fucking uh, what's the movie? How about that? Like with Ray, with Ray uh, Liotta, where he's getting his brain eaten by Hannibal Lecter. Which movie was that? I don't remember which one um. that was. Oh, uh, Silence of the Lambs. It was one, uh, no, it was the one after that with Julian Lewis, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't sequel. remember the name, no, but anyways, blanking. yeah, yeah, I would definitely eat you while you were still alive. That yeah, went, that went dark real quick. <laughs> real quick, it always does though. It does, yeah. It always does. <laughs> so you know, we go through this process. Yeah. Right for the book, uh, it goes to the DoD, and here's where I was shocked because I thought you were famous enough to beat it. I thought everybody would have pushed Matt Best's book all the way through, and like there was, would be a record time at the DoD. Everybody's told us a nightmare story, yeah, and I did. I didn't believe it. I refused to believe it. I think you did too, and so did our, our agents and, yeah. and everything else. Well, I called in a couple favors too, and I had some people very high up that were like, "Yeah, there might be a couple issues with the way that you you phrase things, but." I love the book and I wish you the best. And obviously there had to be a politician in it. And so I was like, man, because you know that. And I was like, man, yeah. oh, we're going to be OK. We're going to be OK. And, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I don't fault the DOD. It's the fucking government. Like, I get it. You know, once we put some pressure on them, some severe pressure, they were like, roger that. And they got it back to us. And they were very fair with their redactions. Yeah. A little more fair than I thought. I thought certain stories weren't going to make it because I was like, whoa. And they did. And so I'm like, all right, let's fucking send it. I was real surprised. Yeah, um, there, there's a story where I have to do SSC on someone, yeah. and it gets really gory and brutal, and uh, more than you would ever think out you, of Matt Best. I, I, that's yeah, the, and, but that's what I want people to read this, where they see where I'm crazy. I'm like, no, I, yeah. I, I've had my fair share of fucking yeah. wild shit, man. I just try to be fucking a good dude and 
as humble as I can be, being awesome. I, I like, don't well, one of That's our funny. first interviews, by the way, because we did about, I think, 38 hours worth for this book. You're, the first question you asked was, hey, are you squeamish? And I said, no, I can, I can pretty much look at anything. And you were like, cool, well, I got something to show you. And I was yeah. like, oh, fuck, you really did live that life. And I unzipped my pants, and Ross was <laughs> like, it is magical. <laughs> no, but I, I, I got to see some, some photos and things that you did, and I was like, man, you really did live that life. Because you always wonder, right? Mm -hmm. you, you go out with everybody from the military. Everybody's got these crazy stories. I did this. I did that. You don't believe they're true. There was one story in the book, which you guys will love this chapter when you read it. I thought for sure you were bullshitting. Um, and it was a. It and was the a... photos are allegedly there were graphic <laughs> there were graphic representations of of said in circumstances. I told you I said there's no way this story is true, and you you popped open a pic of it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this this yeah. is. And then, but it also made me feel more. Which will not be in the book, obviously, because obviously we're just talking him. It's all air quotes hypothetically, but um. But it also made me realize what you had been through. Because in real life, you were an unbelievably positive, hilarious, kind, and giving person. And it's hard to imagine your friends going through shit like that and then coming it coming out of it on the other side completely yeah. normal. Well, think about it. Seemingly from the outside. Think, think about well, from the outside. Think about a normal person. Like how how many friends have you had die? You, right. you as a civilian. Because I've had like twenty six friends die. That's a lot of fucking people, dude. Same, and I would say probably eight, but they were all like natural things, right? Yeah. Like I, they didn't die in front of me. It was car yeah. accidents or ours are in front of us or suicides exactly. we heard about on the phone for yeah. the most part. That's that's a lot of fucking dead people, man. And it, 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 yeah, and it's hard, you know. Like Matt was talking about, one of the things when you're, especially when you're doing a piece of media, you want to memorialize them in a way that they would be proud of and their families are going to be yeah. proud of. But like, there comes a, I'm not gonna lie, there comes a point where you hear about another guy killed himself. You're like, fuck, man, I don't even know what to do anymore. Like it, yeah. it is so fucking frustrating at some point, and you know it, it, it's a good reminder. That's why this book is I so think... fucking important, in my opinion, because it tells Same. these real raw stories. Like, hey, this shit exists. We got to. We can't ignore this. You it's can't like, ignore it. Thank you. Like I love that fucking, fucking statement. You can't ignore it. And like, I know there are going to be certain people that are like, you can't write about that. And I'm gonna be like, yeah, you fucking can. Yeah, fuck because you, buddy. Because you motherfucker chose to send fucking you know 17, 18 year olds to go fucking play war. You just don't really want to think about it. Yeah. Fuck you, because they had to fucking deal with it. And I'm not even using myself. I just made examples of my own fucking experience. But, like, people need to know. Like, that there's a reason why people feel inclined to say thank you for your service, right? Right. Because they went through some shit, most likely, right? You know? And I don't know. And that's why, I, again, again, with the cover, I was like, thank you for my service. I loved what I did. I enjoyed it. I met the most epic people I've ever met. I'm so I'm close friends with all these fucking dudes that I served with that were just like brilliant badasses that were just fucking gangsters of war. And um, yeah, I, I'm just thankful for it. And so and give everybody a laugh. Yeah, course. and not only that, but that's where the three yeah. years comes into play for the positive. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, for sure. You have enough time to sit back and be like, all right, great. What is this book really about? What do I really want to name right. it? And then, you know, luckily the the fuck title got played out, and yeah. and it was just like, all right, cool. And then you got to sit down, and you came up with that on your own, and you said, hey, man, I think this is what I really want. It well, to I do be. want to give Jared credit. So we were at the nth hour, like the book. Jared is, Taylor. Yeah, the book is going live. I wanted to call it "Killing Bad Guys" is fun. Hard no from the fucking publisher. <laughs> Hard no. And the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, me, people might fucking misinterpret that. That I'm like, oh, "Killing Bad Guys" is fun, but I was like, no, like I want it to be like, how do I say this is a crazy story, but then it's humorous? And I was like, what if I called it "Don't Thank Me for My Service" or like "Don't," you know, or something along those lines? And we were sitting in an airport getting ready to fly to a business meeting, and Jared was like, "You could do that," or "Thank you for my service," and I was like, "There it is." There it is. And then I, I went in this dissertation to the publisher as far as why I thought this should be the title. And they're like, Matt, we haven't heard that. We love it. Done. And so like a 10-minute really? ten, ten phone call, <laughs> we locked it. And then I went through a bunch of iterations with the, the – the, you know, and again, nothing but respect for the publishing company, but like t uh, covers. I'm just a fucking yeah. perfectionist because yeah. I refuse for things to be mediocre, um, at least to my own taste. And so I went and hired a bunch of graphic designers and ran through like 200 versions of the book. And then I found it and I was like – Okay, here we go. And I sent that to them, and I, again, gave them a dissertation why I think it should be the fucking cover. And they're like, we love it. I'm like, okay, roger that. So, like, I'm, I'm doing the right things here. Yeah, and when, so. it, and when it came out, every single person, I, I haven't had one negative comment of 
the the title or the cover, but he was like, "Oh, it's fire! This is crazy!" I, I, I saw the comic goes, "This is the douchiest name for a book ever." I'm so fucking buying it, love it, and I was like, "That's hilarious!" Because it is fucking. It's a play on yeah, words. but that's yeah. like, that's you been read your, it and you're like, "Fuck this!" Oh, oh that's been yeah, your yeah, that's yeah. been your whole fucking career though. Yeah. Everybody looks back at the old videos with the bikini snaps and the fucking and the and the the rap battles and all this stuff. Like, oh, Matt's fucking d back. Look, dude, he's he's it's a send up. He's taking the piss. Yeah, like he's yeah. making fun of the fucking culture. He's you, making do you fun not, of, of do you of not himself, have you not got culture, it's been yeah. ye, it's been years. Have you not picked up on that yet? Come on, like what's Matt like in real life? He's just, he's fucking mad, dude. He's a normal <laughs> he's a normal human he's being. A tattooed douche. Yeah, yeah. And, and, here, and here's the other thing about it is you know because I know you uh, obviously personally and how hard you work. Like for Black Rifle, I mean you're you work like 15 hours a day. You help with the bag designs, like the. Uh, all of the the yeah, art, artwork and executive everything, vice president and, but but yeah. all of the artwork too for the bags and things like that. Things that you you don't have to do. You no. could hire somebody to do that. So therefore, when the publisher came back with the first copy of the cover, you were like, no, 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 I got this one. Like, I kind of, uh, I, I like kind of do it. this. I do exactly. what I want. Yeah. yeah, like you're probably better at that than they are. Not, That's not, what I think. You know, but you know, they had their best foot forward. And again, I don't ever want to like. Sound like slander, but yeah, like I, I'm a fucking. I'm not trashing I'm, them at I'm all. A, try to be married to me, dude. I'm an annoying perfectionist. I'm like, oh, that's what you would have done with the wall, and I'm just like criticizing because, like, <laughs> that's one of our company values. Like, we got to celebrate wins because, like, I've put out videos that have gotten you know 50 million views. The next day, I'm like, ah, could have got fucking 60, man. Get the fuck. Like, I, I just like I'm not content with shit for some reason. I I'm kind of wanna... picturing Matt Best, the interior designer, in my head now. No, that that's Jared Taylor. Day. No, you should still have that show. By the way, I've, <laughs> I've said it. No house left behind on HGTV. <laughs> it's got to be. You've got to do a fucking home fixer upper show. I think you'd be great it. at it. Yeah, you'd be Dude, great. Can at you guys it. carry the conversation for like fucking two minutes while you I go it? piss? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go take piss. a piss. Yeah, do your thing, guy. Because I, I, I will say this: as Matt goes and pisses, uh, we went. Look, I just flew into San Antonio. We went to a Mexican restaurant. One of my faves mm. what was the name of that place Dan? la fagata it's great god bless it's it. really good outdoors gorgeous i mean the cause, food's because we're in may what's the what's the weather like here in june and july is it terrible it's hot as fuck yeah. is it really yeah so it's, it stays humid the whole fucking time too. Yeah. so sitting outside on at a restaurant like today would be brutal right uh in a couple months yeah <laughs> it's gonna be pretty rough because the the waitress was like oh you can sit outside it's great and i was like yeah, yeah. well even now like i pick up my my drink and take a drink out of it, and just water drips in my lap from condensation. And the ice dissolves real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you know, it's Texas, man. It's South Texas. What are you gonna do? I have nothing, I guess. Yeah. Just uh, ride your fucking San horse Antonio into San Antonio is a is a wild city. The traffic here is surprising to me. Well, so you've lived in LA, Matt's lived in it. We've had this conversation a million times. You both lived in LA. I've spent a lot of time there. I've I've lived in uh, the Bay Area. Yep. Drove from Oakland to San Francisco every day. I lived in. Uh, in Wisconsin, drove back and forth between Milwaukee and Chicago. I lived in uh, Seattle for months on end, doing work up there. I lived in major cities all over the country. Traffic sucks, but the drivers here in San Antonio are the worst I've ever seen in my life. It's crazy. It's I, it, I don't even know what it is. Like today, it's because nobody's nobody's legal, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like a little drizzle is all it takes to completely fuck traffic here. Yeah, it's, I've never seen anything like this in my life, and I've lived in some places, man. I mean, I've lived in big cities, and it's just like, what the fuck, bro? You know, Dave Reardon, Dave, our uh, you posted a picture on Instagram the other day of somebody driving down the highway with fifty million things on top of their car. Yeah, that's a real picture, right? That is a real picture. Yeah. Okay, and that was some that was something on a real drive. Yeah, oh D- Dave God. said something like, uh, I wish I was surprised, but it's San Antonio. I've just gotten over it. I, this I laughed my ass off because I was like, eh. What was it, like figures. 15 mattresses on top of the back of a truck or it, some it shit? It looked like an entire two-bedroom apartment yeah. on the back of a It was like the Beverly fucking Hillbillies. Yeah. Like a, it was no, like a Pontiac. Yeah, it was the Beverly Hillbillies, basically, <laughs> is what it was. Man, I, I if that's what it's like on a regular basis here, God bless you guys for, like for putting up with that. I love San Antonio, man. I know you do because you live out in Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> when That's I, fucking funny. It's true though, because when I went out to funny. Bernie, I was like, "Oh shit, this is what you, you, tur- what you, you turn off the, the freeway to- and you're yeah. like, wait a second, this is do- okay, Bernie. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, don't tell everybody about my secret, man. I won't because I and it is a secret. It's too late. Everybody's moving up there. Are it's they really? Late. Yeah. Real estate's going through the roof. Yeah. there yeah, by the it way. Is. Yeah. Because because when I, in, I was up at your years, place and I was looking at fuck show man, I was looking at places and then you took me out to like the places for brunch and all the other yeah. stuff and there was like a a pond and people out fishing. Yeah, it's yeah. nice as fuck up there. Holy shit! It's like a whole other fucking. It was like city, a Norman yeah. Rockwell painting, yeah. and then mm-hmm. the rest of San Antonio, 
was like, and I was like, man, how how is it that different? Well, Thirty we, minutes apart. I think all of us like fucking smaller cities. Like you like beach towns yes. and like low yeah. key yep. local spots, and so like. The city works for some people. It just doesn't work for me. So I like that small town. Like the four restaurants I have to choose from. I show up. <coughs> the waitress gives me the drink I I want because she knows yeah. me. Like that. That's the shit I it's like. It's cheers, man. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Well, I think as you get older and you get married, more mature. Uh, also, you like that for older and married. Yes. I don't know about mature, but wow. Well, <laughs> depends on what you. Mean. It depends on what you mean by mature. His decision making is way better now, but. His personality is not more mature. Asset Gator. No Asset Gator who made the yeah, best decision. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> Hashtag didn't break my foot. Who's the real bitch? The Gator. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the commander? Not you, can am me. <laughs> so did you the... stand up after that and yeah, point your you? eyes and say, I am the captain now to the Gator? In the story, yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. In real life, no. <laughs> no In real no, life, I was like, oh fuck. I didn't, you still didn't take any pills, man. That's crazy. No, I feel like every time it's just when I'm the VA because I definitely have TBI from being blown up mm -hmm. and shit. Um, uh, they, <laughs> I always, I, don't, I just don't think my personality because I'm making cracking jokes. I'm like, I'm great, and they're like, this dude's fine, you know. Until you do like a CT scan, you're like, oh, you oh, know, he's should, fucked he's up. I actually Probably. had the same thing. No I took wonder that he stutters sometimes. I took that test, like the the post. So you take the baseline test for TBI yep. before you deploy yep. and shit, and I take the test afterwards, and it's the same. Answers are all the same. But I can't remember where the fuck my phone is. I'm like, look, man, I can't remember shit. You gotta, gotcha. you gotta, you gotta fucking help me out here somehow. Like, oh, your tests are fine. I'm like, dude, scan my fucking brain. My brain's a piece of shit now. Right. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. That's why I just pour booze on it all the time. Yeah, it why not? And it, look, if you're if you're buying booze and pouring booze on something, buy a copy of Matt's book and pour some booze on it. You're gonna sign some copies, right? Is yeah, that true? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do. Wanna... Everybody has hit us up and said, yes. "Hey, is Matt gonna sign some?" Well, I do want to say this. Like, I think that I've been out there for so long in social media. People think they've heard the stories and stuff, but like, this is like they the have most not. transparent, like crazy shit you're gonna read. And and I really want to give again credit to my wife. My wife read it like my the beautiful soul that's married to me and puts up with my fucking idiot ass. And she was like, "Wow, like the jokes I couldn't fucking pretty much set it down." And I'm not using her as an example. I mean, I kind of am, but it, the fact that her even with sex stories in this of my past, she's like, "Fucking, it's super cool." Like I got to know a lot about you, and I've been with her for over three years now. So right. like she's learned a lot about me just by reading it like my lineage of my family like you know great uncles that served in world war ii my father as a uh, as a marine guy my fucking two brothers that served together and his cancer with a really weird story at fucking september 11th and how all Boy. this it's like some yeah. of it's like you can't you you couldn't write a book about it almost but i fucking did but so you did yeah I, I take a lot of pride in it and and i and and, and selfishly i do want to be a bestseller because i want to love fucking throw it in so many of these progressive faces that I know these days that just hate me. And like, you can't write a book. And I just want to be like, bitch, I'm a bestseller. You're a fucking loser. Yeah. Because so. once you're you a bestseller, you, you live with that yeah. the rest of your life. If the plane goes down and everybody dies on that plane, yeah. it'll say, New York Times number one bestselling author, Matt Best, dead on <laughs> Delta Flight 197. <laughs> yeah. And I've never really cared about like the 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 title of anything like that. Like when people are like, you're a celebrity. No, I'm a fucking drinking bro. I'm just a normal dude. But the book, I'm like, I really want this to do well because I think people need to read the story and they need to be grossed out by some of the fucking war shit. And they need to be like, whoa, you know, like there's a story and I'll, I'll allude to a little bit, but like a predator drone crashed. And I was uh, the team leader on Ranger Battalion uh, of my of my uh, team attached to a PJ guys. That was stupid. I didn't say that right. I'm getting drunk. But we we, we all are. We, we went out to go fucking salvage a, a predator drone, and like <laughs> it's my job to blow this thing up and provide security so the PJs can do their epic recovery stuff. And it was like a fuck show. But there's like these moments where I'm trying to like call in another unit and do fucking comms with them, and they're kind of fucked up. But it's like those are the war stories I really want to tell. Where it's not about like I'm a badass. It's about like the fucking hilarity of war. You're out there with yourself, and it's only up to you at 20 fucking one years old yeah. to figure out it's so how stupid. am I going to navigate 32 people from fucking um, that are coming to support us and worry about the guys here in Target. Like, who put me in charge? I'm what the fuck, man. Yeah. But it always seemed to work out because you just take your best foot forward and you like mm -hmm. really believe in yourself and. I'm, I'm just I'm ecstatic about it, man. I really am. Same, same, and it's uh, and available. Yes. Oh, sorry, you pre-sale. I'm, I'm getting tipsy in that last Go shot. Ahead. But the uh, yes, I will sign every single pre-order. So I talked to my publisher today. They're going to kill me for saying this, but um, I said I will sign every single pre-order, and they're like, Matt, what if you sell you know 
15, 20,000 copies. And I'm like, I will sign every fucking pre-order. And they were like, Roger that. So if you go on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, yep. it's everywhere. If you if you purchase it as a pre-order before the release date, August twentieth, I will sign every single copy. So yeah, because we we've had a lot of requests for that. Uh, the other thing we've had a request for is, are you doing the audiobook? One hundred percent. Yeah, great. And that's something we're working through. And then um, my goal, and I still have to do some <laughs> negotiations, but the last thing I want <laughs> would be this: Welcome to. <laughs> Thank you for oh, my service. Yeah. In this episode, Mark Best talks yeah. about how he's going to combat ISIS terrorism. Yeah. What's the guy's if, name? If you've read any George, of the, like George Guadel, if you've read it, any yeah. of the Mitch Rap books or any of those famous like spy yarns, they, they tried to put shit, it, they tried to put him on me, George and Goodell. I was like, hey man, he, you can't he's, fucking can do you imagine shit. that? He's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's great. He's great, but like he's fine. for spy novels, but not for yeah. a fucking that, biography. like the guy of fucking um, Planet Earth reading a book. As he began to saw off the arm, <laughs> he knew the Blackhawks were 15 minutes out. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 definitely doesn't work for me, man. Can't do can't that. Do it. Yeah, you can't hear a fucking dude that's a scientist talking about sawing off some dude's arm to get PID. Yeah, uh, HBT. This is not a thing. Come no. On. So yes, I will be doing an audiobook 100%. I will. I'm working very hard, and and Ross will be a component in this to actually act it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I want this to be like theatrical, where you get the card cover, you get it signed, and you're like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. But then you get a whole new experience. Yeah. Of actor. A where it's actor, like a movie. Not like. Yeah. And then Kelly said. Go that way. Yeah. Brad said, that's right. <laughs> fuck that. Like, I wanted to be like, what the fuck do you mean, Kelly said? Like, let's make my fucking fun. Like, yeah. let's like make it engaging yeah. where you're like, oh my God, I'm make it like a movie. Yeah, and there's parts where uh, Evan and JT will be reading too in that. Fuck right? yeah. yeah, of course. It's like a whole fucking They're besties. Thing, they can read their whole entire parts. Yeah. And there's so many parts about Jared and when I met him that people are going to laugh, especially if you're a drinking bro. Like, we talk about Jared, but, like, when I first met that dude, he was a lunatic. Lunatic. And I love him every second for yeah. it. But he's a lunatic. I moved in with him for one day. And I'm like, <laughs> deuces, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's super fun. because I lived get... with him for a fucking year. It yeah. was, uh... Yikes. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but all, like, people, if you hear all these stories about Jared and you think, oh, that's just, like, a character. It's not a no, character. It's, it's not... exactly who he nope. is. Yeah. Every single day, every hour of every single day. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. No. And I think you really see also like Evan and Jared's characters progress, especially Jared, because I mean, I met this dude when I was fucking. I made like three videos, and I was and I was just trying to make people laugh. And I reached out and met, and and, and honestly, Jared, you know, promised the world, and I got I got a, a state, you know. But like, it was such a cool developmental stage of our. Um, friendship and people don't know that story. I've never really even fucking told it. But yeah. It's wild. It's fucking wild. And so when you read it, just my, my wife was laughing about it too. She's like, it all makes sense. It's fucking Jared. I'm like, yeah, but it, it's awesome because I love the dude. But like, I wouldn't necessarily be where I'm at if it wasn't for him helping me navigate it. And so like all these pieces of the puzzle kind of fell together for my dumbass to have a fucking podcast and a business and, you know, Work ethic is definitely one of them, but I, I, I'm a very fortunate, lucky dude, and that's really I want to share this story with people where they're like, oh, my God, I can do this. If this fucking crayon-eating idiot Matt Best can do it, I can fucking do it, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, and, and again, the Jared aspect of this book, no one knows about. So when you read it, you'll be like, oh, fuck, he really did well, and all the kind shit, of like, put all of us together in a How did way. Art 15 happen? How did it kind of go away? Because people have those questions like, what happened to Art 15? You know, what yeah. happened with this? And I'm like, I put it all out there. That's why I rewrote the last four chapters after the DOD because I was like, I want to tell an honest, transparent story. And I'm not picking on anybody. It was just like, we have disagreements with certain people and we move on from them. And I, I wish them well in their own, um, you know, endeavors. But some shit doesn't work out and we've never done it publicly so i'm like what well, this is a good forum to say it so people can read like oh not everything's been a win there's been a lot of fucking failures you know yeah a lot of fucking failures and we you just, can't you can't learn from anything them. in life if, if you don't fail at things so yeah and it's also yeah. self-help book right there right wow. it's also okay to positive <laughs> it's also <laughs> it's okay to outlook it's also okay to disagree yeah, do two super successful things instead of one like angry thing yeah and bo everybody's like happy and successful. are you talking about the podcast right now <laughs> oh, maybe, oh my maybe. goodness holy gracious. shit i've we never just segued it's like so we should we should address that by the way because th there's uh, a lot yeah. of things there's a lot of things going on at black rifle yeah there's a lot of things going on with with you personally uh yeah. book and, and everything else and uh some people have asked are like hey man are you guys still doing the podcast yes drinking bros is continuing on people think we hate each other for some reason i don't i don't no understand that. any of like, that we're all best now. friends in real life i don't want to be here right now <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I was going to say I was going to fight three people, but it's you, Dave, and Ross. Or, you know, Ross, Dave, and Dan. Yeah, and fucking, plus you're going to bump so a leg. Like, it, yeah. This would be yeah. an easy one. Tonight. I'm just going to hold you down. Easy one I'm going to I'm going to hold I'll you. I'll chop down. that bitch off and hit you in the face. With it. <laughs> I'm going to hold you down. He's going to tickle you. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, but l- let me. If I can s- try to sum this up the best okay. way I can, right? I'll see if I agree. Yes, and that's why. Uh, okay, we're all on the show, and this is live, and we're going to pass me some room. We're going to put it out tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm gonna, I already texted my wife, come pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we did all of this from the get-go, starting from 2000, what, 14, was it, right? Because I think we started the movie in 2014. Yeah. Range 15. Was to help out veterans. Take a swig of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going pussy. to. Come on. Was, was to help out veterans. Me in Hollywood, Clay, it was uh, Clay Crawford and I, another guy named Christian Kane. We did a lot of veteran charities. We always tried to help out. When, when Jared sent me the script and he said, hey, we're veterans, we want to do this, I was like, awesome. Then I met you guys in real life, and we were all just best friends because we were fucking crazy and did a bunch of wild-ass shit, right? Did the podcast and everything. You guys were starting the coffee right around the same time. If I'm not mistaken, Black Rifle Coffee was around 2014, kind of in there? September yeah. 2014, yeah. yeah. Yes. And your main goal with Black Rifle Coffee was, hey, man, how do we help as many veterans as we can transition Higher, like the Starbucks thing. You're giving us a little too much credit. We were just like, Evan has the best coffee I've ever tasted. We're already doing stuff in the veteran space. Yeah. Let's do stuff with Evan. That's how it started. Really? 100%. And, but we were already doing, like, I thought epic shit. It was, how do we do more? And that's mm. when I met Evan. I'm like, man, I'm intrigued by this guy. He's fucking super intelligent and motivated. Roast the best coffee I've ever had in my life. Let's work together. And then that was, that was it. I think everybody has this idea. That was idea. a Jared hookup, by the way. Uh, kind of, yes. J- uh, Evan reached out to me. So, like, I we had a mutual person in Redacted Agency. <laughs> and You're uh, so in book mode right yeah, now. Yeah, Redacted, Redacted, was, redacted. He's, got, he's got the black marker. He's marking yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I had a friend actually reach out to me um, and said, or a mutual friend or old Ranger buddy that was on the range with Evan, and Evan was an instructor and was like, hey, you got to meet this guy, Matt Best. Reached out to me. Of course, I don't check my emails because I'm a fucking squirrel sometimes. And then Jared ended up picking up the email because it went to Jared's uh, mbest11x at Gmail or whatever it was back in yes. the day. Yeah. Jared created the relationship, which thankfully for Jared, I probably wouldn't have fucking fell through. But so it was just kind of like, let's just like put the tip in and feel how this feels. And then once I was like, oh, that's an orgasm. That feels real good. That's yeah. when we're like, let's keep fucking. Yeah. Well, as, as the company of Black Rifle kept growing and growing and growing. And uh, I remember the Starbucks thing in particular because that was a big turning point, I believe, in the company. Yeah, yeah that the, was uh, the February t- around the world. February yes. 2017. Yeah. We were on a Drinking Bros episode when we published that. Yep, I, I remember it. Because Evan showed it to me because Gary uh, Stevens mocked it up, and I yeah. fucking started laughing, and I put the mic away, and I was like, publish it on all of, put it on Facebook, <laughs> put it on Instagram. I remember Jared <laughs> texted it to me. I'm like, oh shit, dude, you gotta. That's fucking funny. Yeah. So 10,000 so refugees uh, yeah. versus you know we're gonna hire 10,000 veterans. Yeah. As this has grown more and more and more, I mean, look, it's no secret. You guys are at UFC, uh, Vegas Golden. You're in the NHL. You're at Texas Motor Speedway. No. Uh, Hannity, <laughs> uh, Shapiro. I mean, we just had lunch with Ben Shapiro, what, two weeks ago? Three yeah. weeks what a ago? cool dude. The, yeah, he's great. great. Okay, wait, actually, I have a bone to pick with Shapiro. Really? Yeah. Okay. Did you not like the barbecue? I don't like Shapiro because he makes me feel so fucking stupid when I, know, I talk to him. I know. He's like, well, the thing is here, it's, it, 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 the thing is, it's like it, everything is just, it, and you're like, <laughs> I, can you just like read me poems? Like he's so fucking intelligent. Yeah. I don't even want to talk. I know. About Every time he'd ask me a question, he'd be like, so, so, so how, did, how did this all happen, Matt? And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a vet. That guy, uh, yeah. he's just so intelligent. <laughs> Shapiro, guys, is is an amazing human, and holy crap, what a nice guy too. Yeah, we, he we, seems we, like he, a he dick had people sometimes. like, and I, I don't want to get into shit, but he had people like slandering and hating him. Yeah, and he was just like, I'll bring him on my show because I want everybody to succeed. And you're just yeah. like, what a yeah. cool freaking dude, man. Yeah. So Shapiro, thumbs up, buddy. I hope to be in your show one day. You're you're an absolute epic dude. Please, if, you, if you're listening, so smart. Ben, please have him on for the book. Please have Matt on for the book. That would be great. But well, he already said he, he would. He said he would, yeah. so. Yeah, the, the, the great thing about him was, you know, we're in L.A. He's in an unmarked building. Has to be. Has to be. Yeah. Don't, because, don't even say Because street. it's L.A.? I'm, yeah. not even, I'm not even going to say what city it's, okay. it's fucking okay. in. Um, but he has us there for <laughs> three hours. Three or four hours. We're drinking amazing whiskey, yeah. scotch. Yeah. He had catered in this barbecue. And it wasn't like his handlers or anybody else. No, it was his producer, yep. his writer, and yep. him. 
sat with what the eight of us for hours, man, and just talked about yeah, life. Yeah, and the two other major guys from the Daily Wire, Andrew Clavin, and I can't remember the other guy's name off the top of my head, but yeah. I mean, it's like the whole it was, Great dudes. It was the guys. I've lived there I love I loved it because I felt like I was back a part of an insurgency where it was just like you know, like the liberal media and all these fucking anti-American haters, but then they reap the benefit of the blanket of fucking Americans' freedom, America's freedoms. And here we are sitting there like, we're going to fucking do it, guys. Like, we're going <laughs> to. And then we have a guy like Shapiro who's so smart, so intelligent, mm -hmm. so rational. And I'm like, yes, be a leader in the community, man. Because, like, I'm fully behind that guy. He impressed me so much that day. Mm -hmm. He was great. And, and again, I lived there forever. That was probably the best lunch I've ever had with any human out there. And they had it's brisket. It was delicious. But but as a nice guy, the yeah. homeboy brought out Cuban cigars. Yeah, and everything. That was, was just uh, like, that was Clavin, I think. It was amazing. He's super fucking smart, by the way. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was amazing. So uh, we we go there, uh, we come back and hang out, and we're kind of discussing what everybody wants to do with the show and with the company and with everything yeah. else. And uh, truthfully, the, the reason why you know uh, Drinking Bros is going to go on, Freedom on. You're going to do a podcast that's yeah. going to go on. Ross Patterson Revolution is going to go on. All these things can succeed under the same thing. But you can't help out a million veterans if you have a show that is constantly talking about gay sex, probably. Right? <laughs> I would I would imagine yeah. <laughs> because your board, your board of directors, the investors, I would imagine at some point you guys are going to have an IPO and go public and all that stuff. Like it comes back to you can't do crazy this kind of content. And still well, serve people around the world and everybody be amps with you. Yes and no. Uh, we, we, we will always be irreverent and against mm -hmm. the grain. I think that, and I don't think that's necessarily the reason for it. Like you said it earlier, and, and I'll be honest, man. I work alone 15 hours a day, just pretty much in Black Rifle Coffee and organizing things that I have to do. You yep. know, it's like the acting chief branding officer, the executive <laughs> vice president, the co founder. And, and the, you work your and, ass off. A lot of people don't and, see that. And, and a board member. Yeah. That's, that's one job. Yeah. And then I sit on some charity boards. I sit on. I have to manage uh, Art 15. I have to do some other things that, like, I'm a not book, necessary. a whiskey company. Yeah, a, a book that I'm like, it, it requires probably 20 hours a week right now. Easily. So it's like you're fucking underwater sometimes, and it's just like, how do I, how do I give people a good product? And I think that that's where Drinking Bros what like felt for me, where we're like, we're kind of just getting it done, you know. But we want to give the best product to the guys that have supported us and gals so loyally over the years. So it's like. We can divide and conquer, and that's mm -hmm. the way I look at it. Like RPR is gonna be great if the people that love Ross, you got your show. That's awesome. Drinking yeah. Bros will always be here. We'll do, you know, we'll still do fake news and this shit, and then Freedom On will be when you know we can sit down and talk about, you know, Marcus coming on or whoever, and talk about veteran issues and, and mm -hmm. a little more. So they're they're segmented <laughs> rather than so diversified essentially. Right. right. Where it's like you have gay sex talk and gang bangs and porn stars, <laughs> and then you have <laughs> brilliant interviews with like you know whomever a guy a trainer from on it or, or whoever right mm -hmm. yeah so it's like you kind of want like some consistency and diversity is good but then diversity is based off of the platform now not necessarily the yeah. episode so if you're like i'm over the interview style i don't like the rogan style i'm gonna go listen to banter correct the banter will still exist and you know no one hates each other i mean but that, that's part of friendship right like we, you and i got in a fucking huge argument like two weeks ago oh yeah yeah, yeah. like yelling at each other in the phone but like we're, we just move on like we sorted it everything got worked out and mm -hmm. we're good to go move on let's fucking create shit and we're still well, friends but it's, you can either it's like a band yeah, yeah. you, you can still eat, friends like, exactly and yeah. i'm putting it out there so for authentic uh, like authenticity like but that had nothing to do with the drinking bros thing that was completely separate of like mm -hmm. sure like hey throw a couple slaps hey i know where you're at i know where i'm at okay cool Let's just move forward and make the best product yeah. and make sure people still get what they want. Well, you yeah. can, get you the can people do, what they want. You can do two things two ways. You can either fucking <clears throat> slap each other around a little bit and get shit dealt with, or you can be passive aggressive bitches for fucking five and years. Fuck and fuck each other over. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not up. that too. No. Fuck that. Get shit that's, done. That's never what any of this has been about. No. Like uh, at all. And uh, and, and again, and no one in the group is like that either. Like we're none of us are passive aggressive. We're like, hey, you are acting like an asshole right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, Always. I'm Always. fucked up, right? Am I fucked up? You're like, yeah, you're fucked up. Like, Ross, you're fucked up. Said, Ross said I changed. It hurt my feelings. You did. I'm triggered. You did. I'm you did triggered. Change. You did change. I'm triggered. For the better, though. I mean, look, you can't be the crazy party guy forever. Yeah. Nah, One that's... day, everybody's going to get married. <laughs> One day, everybody's going to have kids. Um, content has to change. Your, the, the business has to change. You yeah. look at Black Rifle Coffee. If you would have told me when we all met five years yeah. ago that this bag that you guys, I, I believe you guys had started off on Art 15, just kind of selling yeah, bags. Yeah, Freedom Roast. Freedom Roasters yeah. Coffee. Was going to be... 500 bags. I'm, I'm not, the number one e-commerce coffee company in the world and that you would employ all of these people and, and the UFC and, and do all this stuff. Yeah. 
I would have said you're fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, so you, you have to change depending upon what's going on in your life and to right. succeed and help more people. You personally have been passionate about giving back to the veteran community, helping that out, True. and setting a, a great example for what you can do once you transition out of the military. Yeah. Dude, and I'll that's be, what Black Rifle Coffee is. I hope you don't get, uh, say too much here. But th th there is a crossroads there, right? So it's like there's certain aspects of my, I, my life that I have to be more reserved in based off of like the greater good. Mm -hmm. I yes. can't necessarily raise fucking 20 million dollars of capital to finance the franchise program that we've promised everybody and we will execute on because we don't fucking say lies we fucking get shit done and then also talk about gay orgies for 19 hours like right and and, and yes i wish i could have both right because i'm a crazy <laughs> person it's just not the reality of it mm. so there's aspects in that where you have to like mature and understand like fuck i can't do everything that i want i can only do what matters most what matters most to me is like providing opportunity to the community and changing the course of american history with business yeah and and, and the g watt and veterans associated with it that matters more than me getting to laugh drunk on my friends in the podcast yes that will absolutely still happen but there'll be like a, a little more left and right rim limits for me mm -hmm. personally yeah yeah and, and, and trust me read, you can read my book after this and be like well i thought matt said this it's crazy there, it, there's certain things that i found that i didn't expect to be off limits that are off limits but um and i'm not trying to pigeonhole so this is this is everyone's decision it's not mine i think that everybody wants to go certain ways but like no the band isn't breaking up no the podcasts all exist there's just gonna be more content essentially that's, that's like, literally more. across somebody the board, yeah. somebody asked me about it the other day i'm like basically you're getting two times the amount of content that you were gonna get before double well, yeah like, if what, you're one of those pe if I you're one of those people that likes everybody in the show then you're just getting way the fuck more if you're one <laughs> yeah, of those people yeah. that only like certain people then you don't have to deal with the people you don't like anymore yeah but that's like, what it's all good it's like, like i love ross but i don't want to be the drink bros and matt and evan talk too much about black rifle rpr you'll probably do an extra episode a week now yeah awesome yeah. right well i miss all the guys together still gonna happen yeah still gonna happen i really like fucking when evan and matt talk about business and have guests on freedom on yeah yeah boom I, you have everything across the board. Porn stars will be back on in June. <laughs> They'll be back on Drinking Bros in June. And so. speaking of that, uh, like to to your to your That's point funny. that uh, like the mission comes first. Yeah, I don't know if we've ever said this publicly before, but Black Rifle donated over three quarters of a million dollars last year to primarily veteran and first responder charities and you because you guys don't brag about it you don't put it out there in the public but that's true it is yeah a and leader it, it, a leader doesn't brag man and i think that there's something you know and we got haters out there i don't really fucking care but you know um a testament to like evan and and i think myself is like we we're fucking workhorses man i was i had to get up at six this morning i was up until one in the morning last night talking through strategy with evan and like you know i don't think people see that like we're up all the time working and i think that there's like oh you guys fuck off at the ranch like yeah sure we have our fun but what's wrong with having fun and i'm not justifying things i'm just saying like we're working our fucking asses off yeah. here and this is kind of a, a transition of yeah i wish i could go back to jared's fucking you know garage, garage. and drink beer <laughs> and make i made almost more money back then on our 15 than i did here but like i i know that the greater good will succeed i really want to create something fucking epic epic yeah. and if i ever have a kid one day he can walk into black rifle coffee and be like whoa see an american flag and see a plaque that has a medal of honor recipient from fucking vietnam and learn about their sacrifice and be like holy shit dad this is fucking cool that's what i want i don't want entertainment will live forever especially digital but like that's what i want i want fucking i, I want to create a legacy and certain sacrifices have to be made but the good goosebumps. thing goosebumps i know i get motivated yeah but but here's so, the thing i love it i love it, I love it. And, and, and as your best friend we would be selfish to say no matt you got to fucking do this thing versus the other when it's not true, truthfully, yeah. you you helping Black Rifle Coffee get out to millions of people around the world is more important than being on a podcast. Yeah. But but again, in caveat, we still will be on a podcast. Yeah, like you we're, we're gonna fucking do one. It's just like it, you know. We're, you I, just can't talk about reverse sixty nine going downhill north well, and I'm south. I yeah. might still. Let's be real. <laughs> let's 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 be real. No. Uh. Yeah. And and I think that that's what trials of friendships, right, guys? Like you you have to like disagree on some things. You have to fight through them. I mean, when we had this in L.A. and we figured it out, like yeah. being super transparent, like everybody has a little bit of resentment. Everybody's a little frustrated. We've cleared that. Now it's just like, what's the best fucking way forward to create things that we want to do and create or like uh, you know value in your mm -hmm. guys's life? So everything's fucking awesome. It's good yes. to go. Yes, it and is. And especially the coolest thing everything is if you buy it, Amazon.com and go fucking 
Thank you for my service. Yes, and I, I want to I want to end the end of episode with that. They got they got they got drunk Matt tonight. It's good to get on the New York Times bestseller yeah. list. It is hardback. So if you're going on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com uh, to buy the the pre sales, yeah. Hardbacks is is the fastest and easiest way to get there. Also, it's the one you want signed. It's the one you want signed. You and want I, signed? Again, I am signing every single every pre-order. Copy. If yeah. I sell a thousand copies, or if I sell a hundred thousand copies, or a million, I will sign every single one. One on million, every single one. Yeah, and uh, hopefully and there, not a million. Like, the reason why for <laughs> business, but that would really hurt. Me. Well, <laughs> it would. It would. It wouldn't I'd hurt jack the wallet off a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your yeah. wife would jack you off more if you, if you sold a million. I can promise you that. <laughs> that bank account. But look, the, the, she's not about the money. She's about the <laughs> not at all. But I'm sure she wants a yacht the same as my wife. Uh, they'll be together on Saturday night. And you can ask him that question. No, but uh, the last the last thing about this is the reason why these pre sales matter so much is all of these pre sales from now until opening week yeah. count for the opening week total. So if a million copies are sold and it comes out opening week, all those numbers count for opening week, whereas the week after, you start over again. Yeah. So that's yeah. why it's so hard for people to make the New York Times bestseller list. Once that six days is over and it hits midnight on the 7th, you have to start all over and then try to catch back up with the other books. Right. Whereas now, in all these pre-sale orders for the next 90 days, that will that will factor into the right. tally yeah. of the first week and get Matt on the it, bestseller list. It, it would list. mean a lot. Like I never try to ask anything, but it, it would mean a lot because I feel um, – super douchey statement but I, i've done a lot over the years that have not provided value or monetary gain back into my wallet just creating videos so like it would mean a lot guys if you go out there and, and check this and you won't be disappointed like i poured my heart and soul into this i pissed a lot of people off being a perfectionist over the last fucking three years but i, I really feel comfortable this is a great product you know ross worked his ass off in this nils parker worked his ass yep. off the team at fucking the publishing company worked their ass off it's it's a good fucking book um and it, it'd mean a lot i hope you enjoy it yeah, yes. if you're one of those people out there that are tired of all this fucking PC bullshit, it is not PC. It is like, not support- yeah. to say that I can't talk about gay sex, and then I like- go and I have a chapter <laughs> called "Piss on Me, Baby." It's cold outside. Piss on me. Yeah. So uh, let's, yeah. let's just if throw you that if out. you like that, if you like comedians like Rogan and Andrew Schultz and people like that that are really pushing the boundaries these days, go out there and support this book. Like, Thanks, fu- Dan. Tell everybody to fuck off. And, like, I was part of fucking making this number one. Exactly. Fuck you, Fuck you guys. Exactly. Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, anywhere they sell books, it is on pre-sale now. Matthew is a blast, man. Happy hey, to be back with you in San show. Antonio. Yeah. Um, this will be a blast. We're going to put this out tonight. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Matthew Vest. Well, and and no more drama and drinking bros because everybody's still a family. Yeah, and what we're the just fuck? Calm what was that about? Down, guys. Got it, bro. I don't understand what that was guys, about, though. Got just it. relax. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Ross loves to eat, so he's going to make sure he's still this Boy, yeah. I, I Honestly, it's on video right now. I can't. No, no, you'll be on the cruise. If you're, if you're on the cruise, you can you'll come see, out and check out see. my physique oh, yeah, in person. That's another thing. We'll be on the cruise, guys. Everybody yeah. will be on the cruise. Drinking yeah, yeah, bros yeah, will yeah. be on the cruise. Yeah, right. and that's, we're going to do live shows. That's going to be a blast. Yep. And uh, God damn it, man, I'm excited for that. Woo. So uh, go to drinkingbros.com and, and sign up for the cruise, too. Yeah. There's only like 50 tickets left or something yeah, crazy getting, like that. It's getting booked. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah, it's, 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 it's close down to, to the nitty. Booked, yeah. And then, look, if you buy a, a hard copy and you want to bring it on the cruise or a paperback by then, oh. Matt will sign it on the cruise. 1,000%. Yes, yes. Uh, again, for D'Anthony Holloway, Matt Best, and Ross Patterson, <laughs> we're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Cheers. Buy Matt's book. Thank you for my service. Cheers.